This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hi, guys. This feels really nice to like sit down and record. You know, I was yeah. like looking forward to this all day. I know. I'm really looking forward to this. You know, after... A... What's our last episode, Gilmore? Yeah. The okay. last episode was venting like crazy, so... And I just feel like we didn't get to catch up with you guys, and now I'm, like, back in regular non-Gilmore zone. Yes. I've had enough time to, like, think about that. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I must say, at least I feel good knowing that, like, the general climate of the people that viewed that revival, like, felt similarly to me. Yes. So I'm not alone in my feelings, which makes me feel good. (laughs) It's always a toss-up when it comes to that kind of shit. Like. I could think, like, something is, like, okay. Like, I thought Cursed Child was okay, but then I went online and everybody was like, this is horrible. I'm trying to think of something that I liked or didn't like that everybody else liked or didn't like. I don't know. I can't think of anything. I mean, I loved The Force Awakens, and I'm not even, like, a Star Wars binge, but everybody liked that. Yeah, everybody Unless you're, like, really annoying and you're like, it doesn't hold up to the very first one where mm-hmm. the pew pews made this kind of half pitch note and <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, this is Coffee with Rachel. I'm Rachel. And I'm Chris. And we're just going to jump right into what we're drinking. I don't even know what it is. It's just Trader Joe's. Uh, it's like their wake up blend or something like that. With wake our wake up, better <laughs> We should have a jazzy ass fucking <laughs> I beginning. Wish. Can you imagine? Remember at the beginning of the show, like you listen to the first episodes, we're like, you know, if anybody wants to send us a clip of like a jazzy intro that they think we should use, like, oh yeah, we now were I feel like we that. can't do that because we already have like the the, the drizzle. Yeah, that's our intro. Like I that's know. it. It's very easy to produce, I must say, yeah. and the copyright is nothing. Like, she <laughs> you can't like, copyright a sound unless we do it first, React World. <laughs> oh my god, what if someone like patents the sound of coffee or all liquid being poured? Well, We're totally fucked. What's well, uh, copyright binge and clink and... <laughs> <laughs> That's really it. <laughs> but anyway, um, what's yeah. our coffee fact for today? So this actually comes via a binge on Ooh. the Reddit... Because you mentioned how uh, you thought you saw something about decaf being decaffeinated with formaldehyde. Yeah, someone tweeted me that. Yeah, but that's not Fake right. Fake news. Ooh, yeah. So at you. Uh, they said basically from a Scientific American article that in short they used to use benzene, which is not a good thing to be drinking. Doesn't sound good. But uh, now it's water ethyl acetate, which is a fruit extract or carbon dioxide. Okay. So, it's used water or, the, like, this fruit extract shit. So, so, the carbon tax should go on decaf. Yes. Am I right? Drink caffeinated. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, I think coffee, honestly, is bad for the environment, too. Just, like, what they have to do to cultivate it all. It just, it takes a lot of water. Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah. So, I mean, I personally would rather give up animal products than coffee. I mean, <laughs> What would you we, guys do? Yeah, give up all of these because it's at least a tree Damn. it's at least a tree though so you know it's still like sucking up carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere she's still sucking yeah <laughs> and it's somewhat natural yeah even it if is. it makes me have unnatural jittery feelings exactly when you have that cup that you're like you pushed yourself right over that boundary <laughs> and it's like that one photo i love that photo where it's like when you have too much caffeine because you're tired but you like just feel like shit and yeah. it's like that skeleton popping out of its own body yep. <laughs> yeah, that is actually the most accurate meme to date to describe any feeling ever <laughs> that is i know the that's new, a tough the new meme that's not even it's just like one bold statement where they really they really got me <laughs> and those are my favorite types of memes so now that we've discussed meme discourse, um, I was reading today. So today is December 1st when we're recording this, when it's going up, right? Yeah, we're the on the ball this week, guys. I keep thinking there's 31 days in November. Honestly, you could tell me that stupid limerick or whatever the fuck it is like a million times over. I still won't get it right. Do you have to sing that in your head every time you're trying to figure out? I don't even try because it com- still confuses me to this day. I'm oh, still no. like, what the fuck? I got it. Like, I have to do it, though. Like... 
Thank God I don't have to do that for, like, the alphabet, you know? That yeah. would be... I just check my phone now because, honestly, that's just one thing I will never, like, comprehend. And even that song does not help me. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? The worst is when they get to February and they're like, we give up. Like, <laughs> we have no idea how to do this. Because it's like, and all the rest except for February, which only has 28 but 29 on a fucking leap year. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's literally how it ends. I honestly... How lit is it that I was born in February? Like, just very me. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Was born. If only you were born on the 29th, then that would have uh, been really... Yo, there were, I probably mentioned this before, but th- there were these girls in my elementary and, like, up. Yeah. And they were twins. They were born on the leap year. There's always I, that one kid you know that's like, haha, you're four years old. <laughs> Low-key, are they witches? Like, because twins and the 29th, like, it's not even a real day. Yeah. Honestly, the Gemini twins or whatever. <laughs> All right, Diaries. Vampire Diaries. <laughs> um, But Pisces twins or whatever, I oh guess. Oh, uh, speaking of that, though somebody asked if we were actually watching the vampire diaries and we are we're just not oh, really talking about it because like it's honestly kind of shit and... i'll probably talk about it when they end it and then i'll give like my brief opinions on whether or not nino de brev's like if she even shows up if she like shows i don't up know what happens but yeah we're just kind of like going with emotions because we just know it's ending and, and we it... figure most of you guys aren't watching it so we didn't want to like bore you with our our thoughts but anyway, it's December, and so... Yeah, it's December 1st, so happy December for all you uh, December babes out there. Mm-hmm. Birthdays and all that. It's also the month of all the holidays that we care about, probably. Um, and I found out today, so I'm thinking, alright, it's the last month of 2016, guys. We are at the fucking end of this year. Which, for me, I know 2015, I will still say on record, worst year of my life. Personal lives, worst year of our life, but, like, 2016 is, like, the entire universe just had a really bad year. We all felt it. Yeah. We all felt it. And still shit happened. Like... Yes. We'll talk about that in a minute, but... So I'm reading up about December thinking I'm gonna go in with, like, a positive, you know, set my intentions. It's the holiday season. It's gonna be a joyous time. And, uh, you know, we couldn't close out 2016... Without a bang. And that bang is another <laughs> Mercury Gatorade. I love it. You She's know. coming December 19th. And so many people, I tweeted about it. And they were like, that's the day I have this exam. My birthday. My boyfriend's birthday. Like All this shit. I'm going on a plane. You know. I don't know. I don't know if I believe any of it. But it's just like, if I did believe it's nice truly, to blame it on the fucking cosmos. You know what I'm saying? And how perfect is it that that's what we get left with? I think it kind of hangs on until January, which makes sense. Yeah, because leading into the year of Trump. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like normally, I get real pumped about New Year's because like New Year and New Me, right? <laughs> but this year, I'm like, <sighs> we can just hang out in November. That's why I was hoping it was like 31 days. Yeah, I feel you on we that. Could really, just hang out there. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so that's cool. Prepare yourselves for that. I swear, I feel like, you know, the there was a thread on Reddit that was just like, what would be the perfect way for, like, what would be the perfect topper on the year of 2016? The big one. Yeah, and I, I commented on it, I was like, the big one hitting the Pacific Northwest, because, like, honestly, that would just, like, be the icing on the cake for how crap this year was. I really think it's fucked up that, like, because we just moved here, so we didn't have, like, any idea that this was, like, really a thing. I'm assuming this is probably something you hear about in, in school. school. Yeah. Can you imagine? Because, like, I feel like when we came to Seattle, like, we simultaneously slowly started to kill it and i really do think that like it was like the year that we came was the hottest summer that they had ever had yeah and then like all these like iconic stores in seattle that like have like name recognition and they're like inside jokes basically with the town started like closing like first it was that shitty dive uh, the hurricane fun. cafe yeah like everyone when we moved here oh hurricanes where you go and you're like really fucked up it's like open really late at night she gone like, we yeah. went one time and it was crap by the way like not even worth it yeah and then it left and then also the big um thrift store is real popular here because mac Lamore shot that fucking video there and it's oh, like yeah, yeah an iconic place that's gone there's other things too the ducks oh yeah Those the ducks like they crashed <laughs> i don't know i just feel like it's a little weird <laughs> 
But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what we do to places. We come here and then it slowly declines. I don't know. We've never really moved anywhere, though, so we don't know. Well, I mean, I would consider us have moved to Millersville from our hometown. What declined about Millersville Honestly, that wasn't already gone? Yeah, you can't, like, get much further down they to where They got a pita pit. If anything, we improved the place. <laughs> Yo, that's one thing I miss about the East Coast. People always ask, Pita Pit? That was like Subway for pitas. I don't even know if it would be considered like what I consider healthy with a capital H now. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was. No, definitely not. It was a beacon of hope in that town. Yeah, a lot of you guys ask sometimes like if there is things that we miss from the East Coast and like... Nine times out of ten, it's food. It's like, really, there is really not many things that I would miss from the East Coast. Like, I I actually think about, like... super cold weather at times. You know, like... Like... (laughs) I, but even though, here, like, it's going to be, like, in the 30s next week, and that's, like, good enough for me in Seattle, you know? But it's, like, like the intrigue of knowing that it's negative 14, and you're You could throw boiling up. water outside, and it'll freeze in the air, like, that Walking kind of shit. Walking to school and being like, yeah, I just, like, slipped down a glacier on my way, <laughs> you know, like... It was cool if you were late to class, because people ultimately knew you were going to have an incident. Yeah. But, I mean, just the benefit of, like television stuff being on three hours earlier is, That's you know, pretty sweet. it outweighs all of that for me. So. I just didn't think that that was going to happen. Like, I thought everything would be... It used to be, be that, like, they didn't broadcast stuff until later in the day for the West Coast, but now, since we're all, like, so centralized on the internet and shit, like, they just do it all at the same time. Like, now, Netflix is still West Coast, so everything comes out at midnight, but, like, hey, it's not 3 a.m. Yeah. Like, I, I'm exactly. so glad that we got Gilmore at midnight. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's a pretty big bonus if you're a TV <laughs> binge. But, yeah, I mean... I don't know. I do kind of miss, like, just the cold, cold weather. Like, it actually I get, I get what you're cold. saying. Yeah. I mean, I miss... Sometimes I miss, like, the variability in the weather being meteorology binge. Like, I don't miss the spring variability. <laughs> like, where I was like, I don't know if it's going to be snowing or 80 degrees when I walk outside. Like, I just miss, like, having, like... Like seeing thunderstorms and stuff like that because they don't yeah, really where happen. Is the thunder here? They it don't rains. really happen here. Like if there's thunder, it's like a whoa. That was an event. Like, it's like a whoa. Yeah. What would you say is the reason for that? It's because we're so close to the water, and also like that storms don't form over water. What's well, a fucking no, hurricane? it's just like <laughs> I don't know anything because the like the air is moving from west to east, and so like when we're on the east coast, it's coming across like the entire fucking U.S. and it's got time to like rip snort. Sh- yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the, the scientific term for when a storm gets real fired up. <laughs> I was a meteorologist. I took one online meteorology class, and I basically had Chris do it for me. Um, that's <laughs> it was a great because I was in like my third year, and I was like, "Oh, he hey, this is a great took refresher the test for me." And <laughs> it was amazing, and definitely not at all something I would recommend you do. Wink. Yeah, don't um, do that. <laughs> <laughs> wink. Don't do it. But yeah, so yeah, we don't have storms here, and every time I do hear thunder now, like Squeezy gets shook, and he used to not really be affected. Oh, speaking of squeeze, totally unrelated. Just speaking of the squan. Yeah. But he is, he has warmed my heart so much. He's the tenderest, most unique cat I've ever owned in my life. And he is so weird. Yeah, we, we decided talk, that squeeze is the weirdest pet we've ever had. He is the weirdest. Like, he does some stupid ass shit. And it's so random. Like, when he's been doing this ever since we got him. But if I. In use, college, 20. 20- 12. Yeah, when I use mouthwash and I'm like swishing it in between my teeth, he has to come over to the bathroom and he starts biting my ankles. It's the only time he nips his ankles and he like kind of like circles around you like he's puffed up, like he wants t- attention. Like he looks excited, but like. But then the he does like this weird like little him. airy like. <laughs> Like at my ankles And he doesn't really bite me But he kind of just like rubs his teeth against my ankles And it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen an animal do Maybe he's trying to swish I don't know what he wants He wants (laughs) to do a brand integration with Listerine (laughs) I think ultimately that's what he's trying to Squeezy, you you gotta explain your ways Because it's (laughs) fucking weird I mean all of these cats are fucking weird I think just cats are like one of those animals That they just have their weird quirks I mean all pets do this though But like I don't know no, my dog was not quirky. You know, the quirkiest thing he did was like not walk when I wanted <laughs> to take him on a walk, and that's not fun. <laughs> I don't Though know. I had some quirky birds. I've never seen any dogs do some of the weird shit that these guys do. Like they are just 
Your dog Sarah fucks things up. Your dog Sarah is crafty. Yeah, I mean she's just crafty. Like she can get out of a yard. Definitely and, like, a Slytherin. <laughs> she's cunning as hell. Yeah. Like Bentley, he's just like a Neanderthal, and he's more of like he's more of a Hufflepuff. Yeah, I'd he's say. a Hufflepuff. Yeah, I feel that. And I don't know. I would have said that like. You know, I'd say he's a Gryffindor, actually. Really? Yeah, you think he's, he's courageous? Well, yeah, like, if there's something that's gonna, like, attack or something like that, he's got that, like, big bloodhound kind of bark that's, yeah. like, really scary. You know, like, that mug of coffee that he attacked and knocked it onto my laptop. It yeah. cost me, like, a billion dollars. Yeah, he really took care of that. Yeah, that was courageous as hell, I would say. I love classifying animals into Hogwarts houses. Oh my god, well that fits perfectly because we didn't talk about Fantastic Beasts And yet. where to find them. We found them. <laughs> oh girl. Alright, so spoilers, we're going to talk about Fantastic Beasts. We'll put some fucking yeah. timestamps. Yeah, it's basically at 15 minutes here, but you know, I'll put in the timestamps for that. Cool, but, I totally forgot. Yeah. Oh, I enjoyed it. Initial thoughts, was pleasantly surprised. Though yeah. I actually didn't think I wasn't going to like it because I figured they're going to do well. Yeah. And there's no book. And JK is really involved in it. So I'm she like. She wrote the screenplay, yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's definitely a very different tone from, like, the she Harry dark. Potter movies. Because it's like. In Harry Potter, like, you're slowly getting introduced. Like, you're learning about all of this magic. You're learning about everything along it's with Harry. And it's like, oh, wow, all this new stuff. It's crazy. And, like, anytime you learn something new, it's because, like, oh, Harry wasn't fucking in this shit. So, like, he's got to learn all this stuff. But, like, in Fantastic Beasts, it's like all you're the magic. In hot. You're coming in hot. Fan- the magic is all just, like, known and, like, shit's happening sometimes and it's just like this is just magic you know what yeah. I'm saying so it's like different but it wasn't bad like it was yeah. good yeah and it's definitely not like a coming of age story yeah so that's different tone and it's not like the chosen one story I mean he I don't I wouldn't say he's like the chosen one new oh no no because no. he's just like the one that's just trying to like save all the beasts honestly it's already like the naming of this series is a little bit weird because I get the first one but like honestly Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them it's I'm not my, about these beasts. It's like, going to be about Dumbledore and Grindelwald. And, like, I don't they know. They should have just called it, like, Dumbledore versus Grindelwald. Like, they that should have done movie. something else. They should they should have done a different series, not included Newt in this one, to be honest. And then, like, just did a separate series that was called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And just, like, one solo movie about him, like, I don't know, finding the beasts. I pictured him being, like, fucking. Discovering them. Yeah, like Darwin or whatever the fuck, being on a goddamn <sighs> Galapagos Island, like, finding animals, except the Magical. Like, that's that what I pictured. Cool. That would have been really cool. So, like, because, like, honestly, I don't care how much they milk this goddamn universe because there's so much stuff you can make movies and books about. Like, like you could have different series for all these different things. I'd be totally fine with it all. So, like, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. Like, is Newt going to, like, die at some point or he's somehow going to play a role in all of this throughout Yeah, like, how does movies? he... I know, like, he's one of Dumbledore's, like, you know, faves. Yeah. But Dumbledore likes a lot of people. It doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily have to fit with, like beating this bad wizard unless there's like a big beast involved that like helps but I isn't it dumbledore's i don't know i didn't read that part it's of not really yet. like that well fleshed out because like exactly but you just know i thought that him. like this is my theory i don't know if it's true or not but i thought since dumbledore's one of his claims to fame is that he found like 12 uses for dragon's blood like if he worked with newt on that Oh. You know what I mean? That makes sense because of that weird vial of serum that they did yeah. put in the movie. Speaking of that, I will say, though, the magic in this one is a little more loose. Like, the rules and how things work is... Like, I feel like J.K. was really solid on, like, this is the rules of all of these things that are happening in Harry Potter. And then, like, Cursed Child was like, oh, I don't know what we're doing. And then yeah. <laughs> this is this was like, I've got questions Okay, what are your questions? Because, like, um... Because I know that there's certain they... things in the movie that you're not talking to me about because it would spoil yes. shit that I haven't read yet. I just recommend series. that everybody go out and look at the theory about the obscurial. Like, if you are if you know things, just look yeah, at the theories about... Yeah, there were a couple about... of things that I didn't know what they were. Well, because... obscurial in itself is a new concept that was introduced in this, but, like... The other one, the legimen or something. Legitimate. L- Legitimens, yeah. You yeah, haven't, I haven't gotten, gotten there yet. to that. I just started uh, Order of the Phoenix, by the way. Goblet of Fire was great. Loved it. Moving on. Phoenix, she already... It's dark. Mm-hmm. I'm loving it. But, uh... I just thought I would give you that update. <laughs> 
Yeah, so like there is them rebuilding the city at the very end. Yeah, that like was that little, was like, really convenient. loose, and also like uh, everybody getting like all the muggles getting obliv or no matches getting obliviated at the end of the movie, but like not the wizards. And what also, what about the people that were inside? But saw everything go down from their window. Exactly. These are my holes. And like but, that, and also like the fact that this blue liquid, the only reference to it in the, earlier is like Newt being like, yeah, I don't really know what the fuck this does, but I'm going to find out someday. And so then he like, kills all of New York. And okay. then like he just like, here, use this because I know exactly what it's going to do. Gives it to this bird that we don't really know a lot about. And then that, that was like Buckbeak, but like Buck. Beak, yeah, I know, you know? right? Like, that was, that there was, was big a, boy. That was a little bit of a loose ending. Um, like in my I mind. was just hoping for more beasts. I feel like the scene that I loved the most was when he goes into the trunk and he's looking at. Yeah, all that the seemed to be creatures. like a lot of people's favorite scene. Duh, from the movie. that's what we're here for. Because that was really cool. The rest of it was kind of just like, hey, we're building it to Grindelwald. Like, yeah. So I don't know. I, however, standouts to me, Queenie. I already knew I was gonna love. But yeah. Jacob, he was like a surprise star. star of the movie. Like I, I was no thinking, clue. like, oh man, it, it, I was honestly like, I don't know how I feel about like a no match being like wrapped up into like all this stuff. Like, what's it gonna I be loved like? It, the it way was that great. They did it, and oh, I felt so many things when they obliviated. Well, when he just like walked out into the rain. Yeah, and like the fact that I love that he's like, oh, you know, an Ina Garden. Type yeah, of vibe. yeah, and at the end, all these cute little puff pastries in the shapes of the creatures like the most charming character. I mm -hmm. love him, I love Queenie. I don't really care about what's her name, Tina. She was like the most boring, I would say, of like all of them. Yeah, and like Newt, I Newt is okay, very like... okay, but like really charming during the scene where he's like getting that rhino to dance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, like, I've read a lot of things beforehand about how everybody's like, oh, he makes a lot of dumb decisions, and, like, yeah, sure, he makes dumb decisions, but I don't think... So does Harry fucking Potter, bitch. Like, I don't think it's as bad as, like, people were making it out to be. How many times did Harry Potter, like, fuck up when he could have just used his invisibility cloak? Yeah, You know what right? I mean? Like, there's, there's, we all have flaws here. I also Gilmore. liked how Eddie Redmond played Newt. I oh, like yeah. that he's, like, he can't talk to people, really, because he's really, like, awkward, but, like, like the animals he's like natural around yeah and you get him talking about the beast and he's like oh. yeah that's just like a cool like he's just like a nerd about these animals and it got really dark yeah. and they definitely apparate too much but i don't know that's very american i feel like yeah. it makes sense to me that they're not like using i like and stuff yeah i like the way that they portrayed American Wizard. magic. Yeah, American magic because, you know, they were more fire or They're trigger, like trigger happy. trigger happy. Yeah, with shooting the spells and, like, they just apparate everywhere. And so that's America. It's very, very cool how they did that. But yeah. let's mean, talk about uh, the old... Uh, the uh, old depot. I don't even have anything to say other than the fact that he looked like shit and they could have had anyone else be there. Yeah. And it took me out of the movie. And, like, I, the moment that I saw the back of Colin Farrell's hair and saw that they both had the same haircut, I think that was supposed was like, to be, like, okay. a like a hint to you, like, in that moment that, like, oh, okay, this is him. Yeah. You know? And, like, I, it sucks because, like, the character of Grindelwald is going to be so fucking dark and disgusting and, like, manipulative Yeah, he's, everything. like, really sexually manipulative. Ooh. And it's, like... And I don't want to see, like, I don't want to see that character in general, but, like, I get it. It's good writing. But having, like, an actual abusive person play that gives it, like, a whole other disgusting overtone to me. Yeah. And it's, like... Ugh, ugh. It's, like, <laughs> just not good. Not no. great. Um, also, like... Where is Percival Graves, the real Percival Graves that he was, you know, imitating? Like, yeah. that's a big I question that everybody... I wonder if Colin Farrell stay in the franchise or what? Because he was a real person because everybody was talking to him as if he worked at like, the... Like, yeah, edge. they knew him for yeah. a while. So... So I don't fucking know. Also, I thought the president of... Like, yeah, I thought she was going to have a bigger role. Or, like, not be just more be, exciting. Yeah, not just be like, hey, I'm not going to do anything that is suggested and just be, like, a roadblock in this story. Yeah, but I hear that, like, they're going to make her really corrupt, which I will enjoy Yeah, seeing. I could see how they're, they're like, going to make it more interesting. They're leading to that, and that would be cool. So Overall, I, I liked it, and I, it's a good, like, first chapter of what they're going to try and do. I just hope that, like... They make the beasts more apparent, so it makes sense that this is a Fantastic Beasts fucking series. But, yeah. like, I trust them to, like, do something. 
Yeah. You know? We'll see how it goes. If anything, I'm enjoying, like, just having more knowledge of shit. Yeah. But I gotta keep I'm, reading. I gotta say, I am so into Having all new of, theories to theorize over yeah, and stuff. I am so excited to be thrust back into the Harry Potter universe with us both rereading, like, you reading the series, me rereading it, and, like, we're watching the movies, and I just had Cursed Child, which I still enjoyed, and now we have this... And we're and, playing the Lego Harry Potter games, and those are God, really fun. Those, we're going to do some streams of those. Yeah, it's honestly, like, so much better than I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought it was going to be good, but I'm having so much fun. And now I think I'll play other types that they have. Like, they have Marvel. I don't really care about that one, but, like, Star Wars. I think there's a Jurassic the Park, yeah. Ooh, that one will be cool. Yeah, so, like, the Lego Harry Potter games. Fantastic. Rarely recommend it. I don't know how they would be, like, single player, but, like, co-op's so fun. Yeah, that's, like, you know, we're always struggling to find co-op games and so that was like perfect it's got so much shit to unlock in it yeah and they play the harry potter music that's like the best part honestly uh, is that they just have like the soundtrack from like the first two movies just playing over and over again and and it's great great. (laughs) like we're loving it um but yeah so what else were we going to talk about in today's ep so they are bringing back iron chef i know it's (laughs) called iron chef gauntlet i am scared i am hesitantly excited because one it kind of looks like from like all brown's teaser that he's going to be the chairman now which i mean it wouldn't be like that upset but also like kind of sucks the original chairman yeah, yeah biting that apple come yeah, on yeah is is alton gonna bite an apple but also just the way that food network has been going recently With i their feel shows. like they're gonna try and like bump up like the stupid drama of yeah it, like you know? i like what i like about iron chef is like the integrity like the people that actually win that and compete like they think it's like such a big honor and yeah. the judging and everything and if they start adding like I don't think they'll go full cutthroat kitchen or guys grocery games, but like if they start like adding like way too much like extraness, like it was already a, challenging. It was a big shakeup when you had to have your first course prepared in the first twenty minutes and yeah, served but up. That's like, like good. Yeah, that was good, but like that's as much of a shakeup as I want in this. Yeah, you know, I want it to just be like this, like two chefs going at it head to head, just your cooking. Of two chefs, like, like what's the most creative, fast shit you can come up with, and the technical know how and how to do it all. All the Iron Chefs better be back. I want to see Morimoto's lit plating. I oh, want yes. Jeffrey's a character. And being snippy, yeah, I want Bobby so Flay snippy during making those. that poblano sauce. <laughs> like, there's so many things that I want. Fucking Michael Simon just being so chill during yeah. the whole thing and always winning. Like, he literally, he's. I would fuck him. Mm-hmm. Like he's oh got God. that. He's got something there. It's that smile. You're yeah. really into the smiles. Like legitimately the best bald person that exists <laughs> but um yeah so i'm i'm excited because i love iron chef so yeah oh and i guess i always think when i think food network i think hgtv and so someone brought me a story and it was about how chip and joanna fixer up are our favorites you know the games God, problematic faves they belong to a church no surprise here but it's one of those like anti-gay super homophobic churches okay now not of course shocking. not yeah not surprised texas like honestly um gross but like we don't know that that means it's their views you know give them the benefit of the doubt so that was the story and i was like whatever cool then i was on my news app today and now that i use like what is it called smart news so i get like news pulled from all of the websites yeah so i don't get like the super liberal feed anymore and there must be some website called the federalist that's like a conservative yes. website yeah, i didn't know about her mm-hmm. <laughs> i did it the fucking thing that they said about this chip and joanna thing is that hold on i have to find it because i took a screenshot of it because it's like the funniest thing i've ever seen so i'm just browsing and i see this article pop up from the federalist and it says the title of this because the article about chip and joanna going to that church was on buzzfeed okay this headline though buzzfeed wants to destroy chip and joanna Gaines for being christian oh my god and it's like this whole article about that and it is a very funny article to read it says the just i'll just give you a little taste chip and joanna hgtv superstars and perhaps america's most beloved married couple that's a stretch that's a fucking stretch belong to a church whose pastor preaches that homosexuality is sinful horrors are you fucking kidding me (laughs) what the fuck like oh man that's such a like a limp thing to be upset over 
What the fuck? So I, I, I thought that was really funny. So I'm glad that that story had like more of a follow up. But uh, yeah. <laughs> what a problematic vape. You know I know. I don't. I don't really watch Fixer Upper just because they always do the same kitchen. And yeah. I get bored. I'm like, get me anything else. <laughs> you see me spill coffee everywhere. Yeah, you just re- really splashed everywhere. <laughs> She's splashing and dashing. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, well, to uh, talk a little bit, like I know we talked a whole last episode about Gilmore, but just like a couple of you know, non spoilerly, just like additions to what has happened like news that's come out since the revival and uh one thing is that kelly bishop had a interview yeah. about like being back on the set and it was honestly really disheartening yeah it the way that people are describing like coming back it almost sounded like and i get it it's a fucking job but it didn't seem like it was like this cute like reunion of like people it was just kind of like they yeah. worked and they like, pieced out um, so that's kind of, like, just not fun to read about. Yeah, because I kind of thought, like, oh, if, if, I just feel like if I was ever in that situation where if I ever had a show that I was on, like, at a young age, that was, like, a cult classic, that, like, like a Friends or a Gilmore or a Full House or something like that, I would love, I feel like I would always love to have the opportunity to have, go back and do something that, like, gave me my start. Unless you hate everyone. Yeah. You never know. I mean, I mean uh, she was friends with a lot of them, she was saying in the article. Yeah. It was a really interesting article, though. Like, she was talking about, like, Edward Herman, and I would just highly recommend, like, reading up about everything. I've been reading a lot of great pieces about the revival and just, like, some of the flaws and some of the positives, and it's just, there's, like, more info coming, but a lot of people are speculating that they are going to be doing a spinoff. And, and, like, I honestly am, like, I don't think that would be good you'd have to tell me what it was gonna be about and tell me what we've learned (laughs) what have we learned going (sighs) forward (laughs) i don't know i just think like it doesn't it already did the revival which was like here's an homage to the fans for making this really teeny show like super big have like this huge podcast about it like it's still like a big cult favorite get a whole bigger audience once it went to netflix like here's a little thanks yeah, and that's what it was, and that's what a lot of the all the cast members said. They were like, "It's less of a reunion for us, more it's just like we were there to like do the work for you to give you guys something that we thought mm-hmm. was worth it." And like, I think that's all we need because I think anything else is just gonna make it. Because this revival wasn't even exactly where I wanted it to be, so just seeing more, I feel like would further kill that. <laughs> honestly, and we don't need that. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's keep. I think, and it's not big of big enough of a universe where we could do some sort of prequel. <laughs> yeah, no. <what> the <laughs> like fuck? I don't want to see Lorelai like. Oh my at god! 16. Wild. I mean, we already had the flashbacks. You know, wild. Yeah, that would be interesting. Or like, what if it was like Emily and Richard? <laughs> I mean, actually, I would watch that. I would watch if it was like a really old show about like them at Yale or like Richard yeah, at Yale. Oh my like, god! Oh my god! I would. Die. Oh my god, whiffing poofs and all that shit. And just like how they met and like her upbringing. Yeah. And that wouldn't have, obviously, you wouldn't have Edward Herman for that because it would be in the. Young. This is just, we just pulled that out of our ass. That would be (laughs) actually really compelling. I would be into it. I mean. If they had real, I would imagine like Emily and Richard, young Emily and Richard, would have very snappy banter. And like there were, we've been told like, you know, different dates that they've been on and stuff. So I wonder if they would like recreate those. You could see like Emily's like coming out, you know? Yeah, all of that. I bet Emily and her mother's relationship was something. Than to be yeah. See, okay. Oh, the Let's tricks do that. in here, you know? Yeah. That Any of that I'd be into. I don't want to see Rory anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I guess we should go to questions. Yeah, let's do that. Actually, before we get into questions, just another quick reminder gift exchange still going on. You got until next Friday to send out your gifts. And what's that date? That would That's, be uh, uh, December 9th, would yes. you say? And also. <laughs> want to make sure that we hone that in. <laughs> Uh, if you're sad about missing out on the gift exchange, let's just say you might not have to wait until next holiday season to be a part of a gift exchange. Yeah, we got yeah. some uh, we got summertime a- ideas. Yeah. Because we're cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Because it's been so fun. Yeah. So don't be upset. Also, you got yours. Yeah. I didn't even mail mine out yet. Yeah, because I'm still waiting for something to come in the mail. Excuse me. I wanted to like wrap it. Yeah, you know, cute. yeah, I did. Yeah. So I got my gift, and it was from Michelle, 
And Michelle gave me a candle with, it's like a Pisces candle. So like me. And then this really cute, like ceramic speckled cat mug. That's like very like round. I like holding it in my hand. (laughs) You know, like, you know, when you get a mug, that's just like a little chunky and it like fits cozy in your hand. Not like the standard like the coffee with Crachel mugs, those are shit. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I already got mine. It was really nice. So yeah, it was thanks really again. Cute. I can't wait to send mine out. I just got wrapping paper the other day, so I'm excited. <laughs> Honestly, like when's the last time I've bought wrapping paper? Who yeah, knows? <laughs> just kidding. I'm a um, well. I usually don't have to mail a lot of gifts. Yeah. So I'm more of like a gift bag with the what is it? The tissue paper kind of yeah. Girl. Because it's super easy to make it look like you did stuff. Honestly, gift wrapping, it's a skill. Yeah. And if it's not just like a box, then it's really challenging. Luckily, the thing that I'm doing, I think, will be not ridiculously hard to wrap. Yeah. But uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so anyway, questions. questions. We're going to do the Patreon first. And first question is from Camelia, who said, Do you believe in ghosts or spirits? I feel like we've probably talked about it before, but yes. But I haven't had any experiences to back it up. I just feel like, at this rate, anything is possible. I personally feel like I believe in... I, you know, there could be spirits. I'm not going to say that there is not, but I feel like other dimensions. Like oh, that well, that whole absolutely thing. exists because time is fake and we all saw Interstellar. Yeah. Like, it's real. So, who knows? Are we... Berenstain. Yeah, Berenstain, Berenstain. Like, are things just crossing over, or is it ghosts? So, you think it's people that are, like, in the bookcase from Interstellar. Yes, yeah, something like that. Ghosts. I don't know. Huh? But I don't know what to believe. Honestly, I would believe either one. Yeah, I definitely believe in all of that. <laughs> just because I want something to shake things up. Like, yeah. not that I really want, like, a demon. That would probably freak me out. Yeah, I'm not so looking for bad spirits not into or anything that. like that. Um, but I would be down for, like, a friendly ghost um, that, like, just nudge things my way. You know? <laughs> like, in, you know, I spill a you little know, flower me a and little... they draw a smiley face in it. <laughs> poured me another cup of coffee. Like... Yeah. Like, if I turned around and, like, the half and half has already put my mug, I'd be like, thanks, binge. Like, <laughs> how wonderful would that be? But at the same time, why is this ghost stuck here? Brewing my coffee. Like, yeah, what's going what on? Yeah, what a trage afterlife, you know? <laughs> do you want to be a ghost, or do you want to just be gone? <laughs> um, I'll let you know in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, at this rate, I don't know. Ghost is nice because you can haunt people that have fucked you over. That's the petty side. I kind of want to see, like, but just where the gone fuck we go. Relaxing. Yeah, that would be peaceful, but sometimes I also want to know, where are we going to go after I leave? I kind of want to see how people are going to continue to fuck up the planet. Yeah. And I also probably want to, like, see all, like, the crazy shit that's going to happen technology-wise. And also, if I die before, like, certain shows I'm... <laughs> Watching are over. I'd love to be able to like, come Grey's back Anatomy and watch. season one hundred and thirteen. Like Meredith has been put in a cryo tank, <laughs> and she comes out, and Seattle is gone, and all that stands is Seattle, oh Mercy God. West, Richard Weber Memorial, Sloan Dixon Hospital. What if I they just, end that series with the big one? I have said that. Like that would be the best ending, and then the hospital's just gone. I like. I just want to see someone walk in to the hospital with the space needle, like, in, what's the word, like... Impaled in them? Impaling them. You know how they do, like, the nice impaling situation? Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. like, with the space needle. I don't know how they'll frame it, but I want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's Or, like, I want to see, like, the... You know how they always show the Statue of Liberty getting fucked? Yeah. I want to see that, but with the space needle. I feel you know? that. <laughs> in other news, they did decorate the top of the space needle with a little Christmas tree. And it's I love festive. this cheesy town. <laughs> I know. Every fucking crane in the city's already got trees and yeah, lights on it. They put like red and green lights on every crane. It makes it look so pretty despite the noise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question's from Jack. You said, thoughts on Moana and did we have a favorite Disney princess or Disney movie growing up? Uh, well, we didn't get to see Moana yet. We should definitely do that. Yeah, I do want to see it. That's a theater movie because the ocean. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel you. But I haven't seen it yet. But I'm interested favorite disney princess was it or movie oh ooh, it's a tie i mean if i had to say princess i mean ariel counts right yeah okay so then i would pick her yeah favorite villain ursula like yeah. it's just they're the same so i would say probably ariel is obviously my favorite movie but it's like very slimly beating lion king 
Uh, okay. Lion King was my shit. I had all the merch too, because Ariel, my sister, got all the fucking mermaid merch, and I got mm-hmm. the Lion King because I had like the weird crush on Simba. <laughs> so <laughs> I had that God. little like handheld game, you know, that yeah. was like bright orange and yellow. You were not a Lion King person, were you? I mean, I've seen it, but I wasn't like really, really into it. Like, <gasps> what was yours? not like not like I didn't like it or anything like that. I just didn't really watch it that often that's tragic everyone pray for chris i know honestly like i'd have to look back at like which movies are actually disney movies or not but i don't know like, anastasia always fucks me up because that's oh, a good one too ooh. but it's not disney oh it's not or it's like just she's not technically something yeah because yeah. that one would be like if you it like is, anastasia it's wild like it's weird oh that's crazy. I like the crown. It's glittery. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. And it's also got some nice tunes. Mm-hmm. They all have nice tunes, so. Speaking of Disney, we saw a trailer for Beauty and the Beast, the live action, when yeah. we saw Fantastic Beasts. It's going to be good. Yeah. I have a lot of faith. It looks pretty good. I haven't seen the regular Beauty and the Beast for like a million Honestly, years. Honestly, we should probably watch that before we see that. Just kind of like to I just remember the old lady singing. Yeah. I just know? remember and the And that rose. Da- the you're dancing. like, that rose is in a glass, bitch. Like, I, the talking candelabra and the fucking dancing. Like, that's I like what I really, got. that was not one of the movies that I watched a lot as a kid. Yeah. And that, and I probably don't even think I've ever seen Sleeping Beauty. Oh, wow. Which is wild because then when I saw Melissa, Melissa Sin, <laughs> <laughs> Maleficent, I like didn't know any of the story. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And Team Maleficent, obviously. If I've seen these movies, it's probably been like once. You know? Wow, yeah. I remember having... I've, I've seen like 101 Dalmatians oh. a thousand times. Oh, oh, I forgot about the Dalmatians. Honestly, That's that would probably one. be my fave. I loved that movie. I that was had... one I've seen a lot. Cruel Deville, I always hated her, and I was like, oh, uh, I always want to be her for Halloween. I should do that some year because that would just be fun. Oh man, 102 Dalmatians, wild. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Glenn Close playing, yeah, Cruella, iconic. Uh, what a look, honestly. <laughs> um, also, what is uh. What is it? Five goes west. Can someone <laughs> tell me what that is? Because let me tell you, that is a story that stresses me out and brings Never me so it. much joy. Oh my god, it's iconic. You need to see it. Okay. Also, I was on Facebook the other day and someone posted the last like five minutes of Homeward Bound, <laughs> and it's like the sad part where all the animals finally return home, and it's yeah. like they do the fake out with Shadow at the end, and they're like. He was too old. He's the one that gets stuck in the mud. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, he's too old. He's gone. And then you hear his little bark. And I was literally crying. <laughs> it just brought it all back. But for me, it's the part where the cat comes back, sassy. And no one gives a shit. Like, it's so upsetting. I mean, the, the girl, like, it's her mm-hmm. cat or whatever. But, like, everyone was just like, whatever. Like, fuck that cat. Meanwhile, that cat was crafty and saved both their asses. Like, <laughs> I was a big Milo and Otis kind of binge. I don't know who they are. Oh my god, that was another just like two animals in the fucking wilderness trying to survive. Like it's a dog and a cat. Oh man, like dynamic duo. Great movie. I've not seen that. Maybe I should see that one. <laughs> I've seen uh, the other cat one, Aristocrats. Oh. Aristocats. As yes. Well. That white cat is absolutely Lila. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lady and the Tramp just saw that Oh, one fuck too. me up with Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> that's spaghetti, man, you know? <laughs> that's spaghetti. <laughs> I just like any of the animals. You know, like Lion King. I can't believe we need to watch that. Like, I just can't wait to be king. Are you kidding me? What a jam. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> also, the Jungle Book. Is that, like, the original Jungle Book? That's Disney, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that I was... I haven't seen that one in a while, too. Yeah, that was good. I really liked the live-action version of that. And I think yeah. it's on Netflix, so if you guys haven't seen it, there's some really pretty tigers. <laughs> yeah, it's really fucking good. I'm there for the CGI panther. <laughs> I'm there for bare necessities, you know? Yeah. They were... It, they played all the bops, too. Yeah. Like, it was pretty good. Uh, okay, so other questions. I've got one here from the Reddit. The would you re- or would you guys consider getting No Man's Sky with the new update? So yeah, they put out a whole new update. Ads <laughs> like it's called the Foundation Update, aka. I was like, ooh, Beauty Blender. <laughs> <laughs> they finished the fucking game that they wanted to release. Basically, dogs are dying outside. It's fine. They heard us happening. talking shit about like the dogs from you know uh, that yeah, movie. Yeah, I get you. But uh, 
I don't know if I would consider getting it again. I like, know I wouldn't. Because, I don't like, trust them with my money at this point. They like have zero customer service. Fuck them. Yeah, like also I read all the things. And I'm like, still, what the fuck's the point of what I'm supposed to do? Like, I could build a base, but for what reason? Because Your friends can't even see it. Yeah, and like I can't do. I can collect more resources. Okay, cool. For what reason? And why would you want to like station yourself at a planet when the whole point is to like be bopping? Yeah, from planet to planet. So I don't know. I do know. I won't. Collecting it. resources was not my fucking problem with the game because, goddamn, I had enough resources. They just like, need to make the animals look smoother, bitch, because yeah. they were smooth as hell in that trailer, that- and then they were like little jittery fuckboys. <laughs> yeah, probably never gonna get that again, though. I just can't wait to see. Um, what was it? They were saying that like only a thousand people were playing it. At yeah. one point. Yeah, it was like... On Steam, I think it was. It was only like a couple of people were, and then it like jumped up to a thousand. When the update came out, I was like, wow, that's really a lot, That's guys. not like, a lot of no. people. Like, God there's damn. more people I've seen on people's periscopes than that. That's like <laughs> crazy. Oh, that's fucking bad, yeah. But, I mean, if any of you guys have it and got the update, let us know how it is. If anything else has been improved besides like adding the base things. Yeah. Um, all right, I got a question here, and it says, "What is your favorite part of Christmas time?" I would say uh, favorite part. I mean, the decorating. Yeah, that's my favorite part. I would say my favorite part and is being just, like surrounded by your decor. Just like knowing that, like I'm gonna have good food. I'm gonna treat myself to some you know some nice gifts and like that it's going to be cold well whoa, where we live but like hopefully yeah like that's kind of just like the overall vibe seeing all the lights they're all pretty yeah i like watching people decorate i like being at home and seeing my decorations yeah it's that's my favorite part and like having the music just playing. having everything decorated i never i don't get tired of the music like i still enjoy oh i hate it. people that are like oh my god christmas it's I like can believe. you be any more like sad 2016 was a trash year sorry if it's like something that i can look forward to that brings i get me it a if, if they're all joy. cheesy and like as a jew none of it makes sense like, yeah. but i'm here for the bops yeah. i'm here for mariah carey I'm here for Ariana Grande covering the Mariah Carey song, (laughs) and I'm here for that one Justin Bieber song album, honestly. The only album that I would pay for, you know? I'm here for, you know, the overly depressing Rudolph. We gotta watch that. We gotta watch that again. It's coming up. (laughs) I'm here for my Christmas tree being the only light source in my (laughs) Yo, it's crazy how much more light you have this time of year because of the tree and the little uh yeah replace that sunlight that we don't get with all this artificial vitamin shit. d more like <laughs> vitamin c christmas <laughs> we still have stop. halloween decorations up though it's a kind of a mess we've got like basically a triage of thanksgiving halloween and christmas decorations up and we need to sort it out this weekend before we have people over yeah i mean we're planning on going tomorrow it's like we're gonna go to ikea for you know ikea we love that place we need some bathrooms storage bitch and how exciting <laughs> we're gonna get some christmas decorations at target like everybody else on the planet every time i go to ikea i think like nick should be here you know what I mean? <laughs> nick if you're listening like every time i go it pains me to not see you eating a meatball <laughs> so that's just something i don't even think i've actually gone with nick before i just like i know how much he loves There's, it it's a spiritual connection we have that guy you know <laughs> you know they got vegetarian meatballs bitch all right, well, let me do a next question. Uh, this says, just this past year, I transferred to a university and haven't really met or made any good friends yet. I live on in an on-campus apartment with three other girls who I don't necessarily have anything in common with. I've recently found myself feeling extremely guilty for always leaving and not being on campus because of how much I pay to go here. Mm. I love the campus environment and professors here, but just don't feel at home and comfortable in my apartment. My boyfriend goes to a SUNY school about 20 minutes away, and I go to see him about five to seven days out of the week. I end up doing things there that I could do here, like go to the library, study, eat, and uh, do you have any advice or reassurance that what I'm doing is okay? My grades are great, so I'm not struggling in that aspect, but I just feel guilty. 
I would say, like, if you have the time or the ability to get a job on campus, that is, like, I know I always preach that, but that helped me so much. Yeah. And you meet so many people because job you're or meeting... Club. Yeah, like, the, you're meeting the people that you're serving or whatever you're doing, and you're also meeting the people you work with, and it just gets you in, like, a routine where you're showing up to see, like, a similar group of people at your college campus, which can feel weird, especially when you're, but like, But it's, like, new. it forms you a group. And yeah, you got that group, group and would, you all get it. Yeah, I would say, though, like, I wouldn't feel necessarily guilty about, like, being at your boyfriend's campus, because, I mean, if that's what you enjoy, like, if you want to go there and, like, hang out with your boyfriend and do stuff at his campus, like, I wouldn't necessarily feel guilty about doing yeah, that, Yeah, like, know? especially if you're, like, hanging out with his friends or whatever, but, yeah, I would say, like, joining something, anything, will just get you, like, a little click, and then you'll meet people through them, and then you'll start recognizing some of these people you might be introduced to in your classes. Yeah. And then also, just, like, reaching out to people in your classes really helps. Like, I formed so many little friendships that ended up lasting longer through just people that I happen to sit behind. Yeah, you know honestly, I mean? like, I've... I've it was I wild how many more conversations like I've had with random people that I've just like because it's always weird you always sit in the same seat no matter if you're in a lecture hall and you don't have assigned seats you'll still sit in the same oh, spot yeah. and so you sit I get very pissed off when some random yeah. person decides to shake it up so like, you sit you next doing? to somebody and like you start sitting next to them every day you know conversations will start you know I've made friends that way in college and it was like I never expected that I made friends because I ate a meal at the same time as them yeah like we would have lunch at the same time and I would always see like this person eating at the same time and then you just end up being like oh hi you know yeah, yeah. it's crazy everyone at college is so desperate to like make a connection because <laughs> they're all just suffering I feel like it's one of those places where you everyone is like down to have like a little conversation because you're all just like wow isn't this a fucking mess Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know (laughs) but yeah good luck yeah college you'll meet you'll find the people like you will you Mm -hmm. always do end up finding that click yes do you have any plans for a vegan christmas i'm a new vegan and i would love some ideas by the way huge fan of the podcast well thanks for listening um Um, i I don't even know what we do for christmas christmas we don't like i i feel like we order out a lot yeah my like am i home like it was backwards because like my mom or my grandma didn't like fucking turkey so we had ham on thanksgiving and so then we had turkey on christmas so which, your thanksgiving was basically your christmas yeah but like we didn't like have a lot of crazy other shit too like we had all the crazy sides and everything during thanksgiving like during uh christmas time it was just like turkey and some other stuff mashed probably like potatoes. mashed potatoes and stuff but um, i don't want to do the same thanksgiving again because that takes work yeah and i'm not doing that apple pie i do the apple pie once a year bitch yeah <laughs> she takes me all night but we want to make some peppermint dessert we want to make a yule log this year yeah. that's one thing we wanted Vegan to do yule log cake but like the food? For, for food i mean we're probably gonna we should just do like pasta yeah we're just gonna make something comforting and... we'll do a little bit more decadent we usually go for like a lemon kind of dressing yeah. dressing i say because it essentially is like a dressing not really a sauce yeah because we try to keep our pasta like somewhat light but maybe we'll do something a little heavy like a little alfredo yeah. there's a million i really want to try recipes. putting that soy chorizo into the into like a red sauce and like oh, yeah. making that because that would be like a fake meat sauce fuck you agree <laughs> for that <laughs> recommendation um but yeah we'll we'll definitely like snap whatever we do i'm sure i'm gonna find some like holiday recipe on the minimalist baker and i'll tweet pretty it. sure last year we probably got food out like, i'm pretty i think we mind. got the ravioli and it was like four ravioli for like 30 bucks and you wrote a yelp review i'm pretty yes. sure that was christmas uh yeah that was like it was why, why was it green was it like spinach ravioli or yeah. something like that they yeah. tried to make it so extreme and it was literally like four tiny ravioli <laughs> ravioli <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, this is a good question that I think we can both answer. What would, ideally, you know, what would middle school and high school you think about who you are today? The aspects of your life, like how you're mostly vegan, living in Seattle, your jobs, and then you as a whole. Uh, my middle school and high school self would not recognize me. Be shook. <laughs> it would, my, yeah, it would be so shook. Like, I never, so many things about me now are things that, like, I never would have thought in a million years would have been me as a person. And Give that's me like a top the, five things that middle school slash high school you would be shocked by. That I was vegan. 
Okay. Definitely shook by that. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Plant-based, excuse me. Um, that I was, that I lived in Seattle slash, like, worked not in meteorology because i just thought that was my my path you know yeah that would be a big thing that i was in a relationship for six years really yeah like it i'm a cat so i just expected (laughs) (laughs) i I never she's on baggage (laughs) (laughs) so many of you guys like somebody made a thread on the reddit about like how it's like people's guilty pleasure to watch that show it is so addicting it's addictingly bad legitimately would consider getting cable just to watch it like gsn man made some changes i know get that on sling (laughs) uh yeah so that um the fact that i drink and smoke like honestly those things well yeah because you were underage well that didn't fucking stop you from drinking when you were in high school yeah but but i had like the rough childhood it was expected well i mean still like a lot of people i i never expected that like i was going to want to do that like not even just because i was underage but like it wasn't like interested you know Uh, what i mean so we don't even drink now yeah it's fucking annoying (laughs) (laughs) i drank (laughs) brie she she came and she gone like (laughs) brie made me my first bloody mary which i cannot believe your savory queen over here hadn't had one before i was dragging her on twitter but i really did enjoy it yeah it's so like (laughs) all night long is your pizza sauce drink i was like i love my pizza because i was really (laughs) fucked up like honestly (laughs) and i was so hungover the next day and i got my period which was like super late and so it was like insanely painful it was and i was just like whoa (laughs) this is wild but she still ate her potatoes so uh what about you though your high school middle school self now i would say seattle I knew it was my goal to get the fuck away. But did you think it was actually going to happen? No. I I stopped believing it was going to happen the moment I was like, I want to apply to this school and this school. And they were just like, bitch, you're not going out of state tuition. If anything, if you were to probably ask you. Which I'm low-key glad. I don't want to be paying those student loans, bitch. If you were to ask your younger self, like, if you were to be out of Pennsylvania, where would you be? Like, you'd probably said New York. Yeah, I thought I'd be in New York. Which, like... (laughs) Picture me trying to hustle and afford that. <laughs> no, it's too it's too stressful a life for a simple young twat like me. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I really do think that like actually getting out of there would have surprised me. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say mm, probably my eyebrows would be the most shocking <laughs> because they are amazing. And I would say, I mean, just me being in therapy, because that was something that, like, I used to really, really want to be doing when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, you know, starting to, like, trigger self-harm, you know, like, all that kind of stuff. So, sorry if that was not something you wanted to hear about. But when that started, I was like, okay, I think I could probably go get help. But I was, like, not allowed because I would be, you know, in middle school slash high school. And Do you think you'd be shocked by, like, how you've come sexually? Like, Oh, my God, yeah. Duh. Good call, Chris. Thanks for reminding me. (laughs) Yeah. There's so many layers. You're such an onion. (laughs) It's crazy because, like, now I'm just, like, I can't imagine a world where I'm not, like, just pretending I'm straight. So it's, like, I'm so comfortable now. Yeah. And yeah, like, that was. Do you def- think your younger self would ever thought that, like, wow, I'd be able to be like open about this and no, like, no, like, 100% that I could be what- confident about it too? Yeah, because at that point you didn't fully know like what I was you wanted to. It. Yeah. I was like, no, I'm like hashtag normal or whatever, and there's no normal bitch. We're all just living. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think I would be really surprised that I'm like somewhat trying to like be an activist. Not that I'm like a perfect one because I'm a new binge to being out you know what i mean and i'm coming up on my two years of being out crazy so that's pretty wild that's just like my own personal personal goals yeah or milestones i guess yeah so probably being out being in seattle therapy therapy and my brows (laughs) yeah also being a cat person because i used to hate cats yes so that's like just changes bitch i'm glad i changed that about you you know oh yeah and you know what honestly diva cup because ah. that's something that like I would have seen that when I was younger and been like oh what kind of hippie fucking thing is yeah. this and now I'm like just so pro all of these things that I was so weirded out by before I don't shave I like barely wash my hair you know like all of these things yeah. and I love it <laughs> I think honestly high school me would be really shocked at how like low maintenance my like 
clothing choices would be mm-hmm. because I used to be like in high school I was like one of those people that was like oh my god you wore sweatpants like what kind of trash are you I'm wearing like stupid high waisted crap skirt and like I was so uncomfortable and it was because I wanted to always like look good because I thought like that was the only way that I would be liked literally and now I'm like I don't even wear a bra (laughs) (laughs) and I just don't care like there are some things that you do not need to be like stepping out to go to but then sometimes I do when I'm feeling like extra frisky and I'm like wow I can also look really good but I also am comfortable looking like shit which I think is really important for everyone to reach. Yeah. <laughs> Some people reach it really early, and I'm, like, jealous that it took me this long. I just think, like, it's been only six years since we were in high school. Like, that's wild to think. It's six to seven years. And, like, it feels like forever, but in the grand scheme of things, seven years is really not that long ago. Like, seven, or, like, we're on six, but, like, six years between me and you, like, sharing, that feels really quick. Like, it feels really short. Like, I can vividly remember the first time, like, we met. You, yeah. I know you can, but like, <laughs> I can. You know what I mean? Like, I remember all of that, and it doesn't feel that far away, but it's literally only, like, one month, not really, like, a semester before we graduated is when that happened. Yeah. So, like, high school shouldn't feel as far as it does, but it does, and it's crazy how much can happen in what I think is a short amount of time between me and you. Yeah, like, how many more, like, six-year spans are we going to have in our life, you know, like, and how much I've changed, like, Do I think I'm in the last like three, honestly? Yeah, do I think I'm gonna change like as drastically in the next like six years as I did from my high school self to who I am now? Who knows? I don't know, maybe, but like it's just really weird to think about like where I am right now and that like I could be a not a completely different person, but like more evolved. I've literally (laughs) my final form. I went from, like, being in customer service slash, like, just service yeah. to trying to do YouTube to, like, now having a different career. Like, yeah. I'm already past, like, what I thought would be, like, the career. Mm. Now I'm, like, moving on from that. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know. It's a fucking... Also, she went blonde. <laughs> I was literally telling Chris before we started recording, I was trying to think of, like, what the most, like, wild thing I did in 2016 was, and it fucking is changing my hair color and i think that's so (laughs) lame but also i guess like some people think it's like really wild to change your hair color and it definitely took me months to like yeah do it i mean it was definitely like you were stepping out because it was like you're going from fucking box dyed red to fucking trying to go for platinum no i don't know i was just like i wanted to change and everyone's known me as like the red and that's been like my kind of like youtube look I was so and it nervous. had nothing to do with YouTube, like, changing my hair at all. But, like, I think it's kind of fitting that, like, I'm, like, probably known, like, on your videos, like, as someone with, like, red hair. And, unfortunately, the iTunes thing will never change. Yeah. But, like, if I ever decided to change my hair color, I would never want to, like, change fucking every graphic every time I change yeah, it. Because yeah. I'm thinking about going pink at some point. Um, like a, like like a, a light strawberry kind of, or no? No, like a baby pink, okay. literally. Just for, like, fun, maybe in a spring. Not even, like, my full head. Something that would wash out, because I'm not doing anything like that. I can't erase, like, red. Yeah. <laughs> red, whew, don't try it. <laughs> if you're going to do red, commit to that and, like, brown. You know what I mean? Like, never go lighter. <laughs> I was real nervous when you were, like, really, like, you were setting the dates for when you were going to get your first bleach done. Like, it was... Because the last time I tried it, it was bad. Yeah, bad. well, that, and, like, I've never known you not being a redhead, so, I like, know. I feel like wild. I finally look like my... What I'm supposed to look like, but Now I, I don't think, like... Going back to, like, the reds that you were using, like, I don't know, like, if I... I would probably, if I Personally, go, I enjoy where you are now instead of those. I know. I, I mean, I, it's definitely hashtag a look. The the dark, dark red. Yeah. I definitely looked like a chubby vampire for many years. <laughs> and I say that, like, it was a look, and honestly, I rocked it. Like, the dark lip <laughs> matching the hair it was great. You red hair heroin lipstick, you know? Oh, my like, God, yeah. Like, now, weird. it's like, I don't know. I feel like I look like what I'm supposed to have hair color-wise for my skin tone. I don't know. Because, mm-hmm. obviously, I'm going based off my natural hair color, which is wild. And I think, because I was so desperate to dye my hair when I was younger, I think younger me would be surprised surprised that I actually ended up going back to like kind of my natural hair color yeah, slash natural I swam in the summer yeah. <laughs> except for like nicely blended and not like crispy greenish. <laughs> 
you know. Well, while we're on the topic of like makeup and stuff, I got a question for you. Oh, okay. Uh, I have normal to dry skin like you, and I've been using the Make Forever HD Foundation forever, but it's starting to look cakey. Can you recommend a hydrating, long-lasting BB or CC cream or tinted moisturizer with medium coverage? Preferably yeah. one that isn't hella expensive. Mama is broke. <laughs> I find that, like, with that foundation, I really heavily moisturize before I use it. And I use, like, a moisturizing primer. Like, they have a moisturizing primer. Okay. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, my favorite BB creams and stuff, because those are, like, what I typically wear day to day, the Dr. Jart ones, any of them. There's a BB No Pore or whatever. There's, like, the Black Label one. I've tried them all. They're all fantastic. However, they have, like, no shades. So it's fucking disgusting. I mean, I get it. They're like a Japanese brand and we understand, but like they need more shades. It really yeah. bugs me. So I can't like fully recommend that because it's, I know it's not going to fit like 10 billion people. Like, yeah, just I get sucks. you. So there's that. And I would also say, oh, um, it's not really a BB cream, but my favorite like lightweight foundation that doesn't cake up on me is the Bare Minerals Bare Skin. But if you're oily, you will hate it. I know you're not specifically oily, but like anyone else who's listening. Yeah. It's it makes me look like a fucking oil slick and I'm a goddamn cat. Like, I was going to say a cavern, <laughs> but I'm a desert. <laughs> okay, cavern. So <laughs> Those yeah. Are typically moist. I'm as dry as a moist cave. <laughs> like what? <laughs> That's definitely not good. <laughs> oh, fuck. Anyway, all right. And my last question we have here is, what Christmas tune best exemplifies the personalities of Chunk 1 and Chunk 2? Well, who's Chunk 1 and Chunk 2? I guess Chunk, chunk one's 1 Chunk 1 is Swan. Yeah. yeah, Chunk 2 is Chunk. <laughs> um, well, the thing about Christmas is that we got Lila, like, at the very end of November, so she was basically, like, a Christmas Chunk. And we've kind of turned every Christmas song into a song about Squeezy and Lila because of that. So she's absolutely, I don't even know what the names of the songs are. I just know the lyrics. And she's, let's hear those chunk lumps chunkling. That's that's (laughs) Lila. Yeah. It's lovely weather for a chunk chunk. I don't know. know? That's that's our made up lyrics. What is the song itself? Is You know, who knows? Like we've doctored it. Is that Jingle Bells? No, it's not. I'm such a Jew. I don't know. I, have, I can't think. I you can't guys, think what the let's hear those sleigh bells ringling, ding, ding, ringling, ding. What is that yeah. fucking song? That's Lila. Squeezy is, is the Grinch. I would say he's the Grinch song. You're a mean one, Mr. Squinch. <laughs> that's absolutely him. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's yours? the song. <laughs> Mine's simply having a wonderful Christmas time because it's very like boppy. Yeah. And yours is probably like chestnuts roasting okay i feel that because it's like corn yeah they're not similar at all (laughs) i just feel (laughs) they're both foods so that works yeah but uh (laughs) let us know what your song is and which exemplifies your chunks well i guess we'll wrap it up here guys all right well thank you for having a cup of coffee with us yep and benches stay tuned but otherwise we will see you on sunday bye Let's get this rolling off here. We've got Nicole Dowling, who is downing a cup of coffee that's got a nice little uh, candy cane in it for some peppermint flair. Oh, are we going Christmas? I was just thinking, you know, December. December. Sammy Jessam is Jess, who deserves more. <laughs> Kayla Harding is crunching down on a hard candy cane you yesterday almost breaking your tooth i literally fucked up my whole mouth yesterday doing that uh we got alicia shriner who's making a shrine to gingerbread cookies aka Bree's mom <laughs> bailey lynn is uh a lindor truffle commercial oh That's yeah almost got the them at the store then i remember they're not vegan <laughs> yeah uh we got sloan nolan who is probably christopher nolan gearing up to release some fucking movie during christmas jackie goldfarb is all of the gold tinsel that we are going to put all over the house when we buy it. <laughs> Sarah Booth is actually going to have a boot instead of a stocking. Oh my god. <laughs> Allison Sents uh, thinks that chopping down a real tree to put inside your house makes no sense. Hunter Curtis is giving us the courtesy of inviting us to their Christmas extravaganza. <laughs> I like choked it out. Megan Rackley is racking up the frequent flyer miles. miles. <laughs> you got places to be this holiday season. K 
Kate Convery is having a conversation with the Starbucks barista about the holiday drinks. Taylor Collins is calling my bluff because I got them a wacky gag Christmas present. Oh my god. Emma Corbeil is amazed with the gift that they got from the gift exchange. Amazing. Heather Ann is answering phones this Christmas. Sorry. <laughs> Sloan Fuller's stocking couldn't be fuller. Angelica Feliz is, of course, you know, singing Feliz Navidad. It just couldn't be more seasonally appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia Ehrlichman Gross thinks eggnog is gross. Yeah, it kind of is. When but you I think like about nutmeg. it, it is. <laughs> it's just like, why don't we just call it what it is? Nutmeg milk, but we added eggs for no reason. They don't yeah. need to be there. No, that's why you should drink the coconut milk version of it or whatever. Just put nutmeg in your cock. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what it is. Joni Dugan is digging up a Christmas ornament that they always look forward to putting out. Oh my god, that's you with your Starbucks ornaments. I know. <laughs> I'm such capitalistic trash. Like, <laughs> Juanita Cara got a new car for the holidays, signing that lease. Whoa, that's a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Annie Wynn is winning a Christmas raffle. Whoa. Lucky duck. Fantastic. Danielle Manis is the manager at a TGI Fridays and has to work on the holidays. I thought you were going to say, like, the manger. Oh, like, my God. that's Jesus, right? Yeah, well, you know, well, it's I not took good. it for a twist. Yeah. Um, Cassandra Lee is leaving lots of candy canes around the house to have at any moment's notice. You gotta have one prepared at all times. Emma Nigren is loving all of the Silent Night songs that are playing. Yeah, that's my least fave, Emma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Courtney Hall is hanging up a beautiful... Deck the wreath. halls with... Bells of Holly, fa la 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 Come on. He's losing his shit. What if we You do- didn't start off with that and I was like, where are you going? Because I'm it's sorry. I'm in, well, Holika of Hanukkah, you know what I'm saying? Oh like, my god. Um, we should do it one where it's just Christmas songs if, yeah, if, if we, we can, can do it. Oh god, sometimes There's not enough Hanukkah songs, otherwise I'd do it. We're gonna go through the twelve days of Christmas some episode. Like yeah, we're gonna do it. <laughs> um alright, we got Becca Jansen. Who is He's dancing to Prancer Jim. Donner and Blitzen, bitch? <laughs> Angela Sue is soon uh, to be wed this Christmas season. Oh, a nice Christmas, white Christmas wedding. I don't know. Michelle North is uh, creating one of those North Pole sets in the mall. Yeah, I don't know. Aaron Bray is braving the Christmas Eve shoppers. Oh God! Can you imagine? Jade Agoshi is going shopping before then, so they don't have to fight those lines. My Elizabeth is a listening to um, just Christmas Bra. jams. Okay, yeah, yeah that's the Hanson that... album, the Hanson uh, Christmas album. Okay, Ishbel Mendez is you know playing those like fun bells. You know what I'm talking about that you can play Christmas music on, like the weird ones. You know, you know what I'm saying. Like the set of bells. What do you call them? Like, is it just bells? I have no you idea. You know what I'm talking about? There's like specific Winston, biblical bells. Like Winston and New Girl oh. when he's got those bells. Like they're weird bells. Yeah, but they're just bells. But Christmas music on them a lot. I don't know. Listen, we didn't have those at my house, so well, it's fine. Well, Ishbel does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We got Talia Miller who's cracking open a Frosty Miller light. and uh, Christmas edition. <laughs> yeah. It's got like a little bit of like pine in it. Uh, Cat Vallejos is adopting a cat for the holiday. Uh, keep it. <laughs> Margarita is marching across a snow-covered lawn. Ooh. That just sounded great. Avery Labelson is reading the label on their eggnog to see if there really is eggs in here. Daisy Blossom Dottie is having some Daisy Sour Cream in a dip at their Christmas gathering. <laughs> that was not sponsored. Emily Lewis is uh, losing their mind over the size of the Christmas selection at Target. Chloe Archer is closing the windows because it's freezing. Burr. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anthony Hood got a new hoodie underneath their tree this holiday season. I wonder if Anthony wears a lot of hoodies. I would like to I know. really hope so. Mariah Hannah is actually watching a Hannah Montana Christmas special on Disney Channel. Oh my god, did they have those? Probably. Elizabeth Holbrook is uh, stopping in at Books a Million for their holiday shopping. I miss them. <laughs> Jennifer Habgood was good this year. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Madison Greer is the uh, green tree. I was gonna say getting a green tree instead of the white trees. You know what I'm talking about? The fake white trees. I like them. They're cool and glittery, and I don't care what you say. <laughs> They're also really easy to make into a Hanukkah bush. Uh, you just get the blue yeah. and silver ornaments. I get you. Madison Wolf is wolfing down a, a piece of peppermint bark. Ooh, Megan McNally is um going to mcdonald's and getting i'm like, sure they, I'm have, sure a they have a christmas latte <laughs> yeah skylar medley is watching snowflakes fall from the sky uh, megan preyus is uh praying for snow on this christmas <laughs> Corey springfield is throwing snowballs in a field and missing spring <laughs> ilka is illegally downloading christmas music uh-huh Ooh. Jax is... Using their own personal axe to chop down a tree in the middle of the woods. How very clever. Nicole Allen is getting coal in their stocking, to be honest. They were on the naughty list. Whoa, crazy. Courtney White is getting one of those white trees because they happen to be a fan of them. Yeah, same Courtney. (laughs) Bridget Carey Davis is carrying way too many presents out of the car, like Rachel Ray (laughs) coming from the fridge. (laughs) Jennifer Cornwell is uh, making... Thinking, well, there couldn't be any more corn at this holiday festival. (laughs) Sophia Cock is getting real cocky about how many lights they have in their front yard. They got the whole nine yards. Ash Roselle is selling cups of hot cocoa for a dollar. How reasonable. (laughs) Jackie Burkhart is... Putting on a jacket because it's cold at this Christmas light festival thing. (laughs) You know, we should go to one of those. Yeah, we have to go to one. That's just like something. Beth Fonseca is not fond of the blow-up decorations that are in people's yards. Yeah, honestly, when they're deflated. Oh, me, they, they are upset. Me at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, Jackie Brujulio is... Getting the key to their new house that they bought for the holidays. Oh my god, that's a gift. <laughs> Christina Contreras is hanging up teensy little ornaments. Ooh. The smaller the better, you know? <laughs> Catherine Simpson is simply having a wonderful Christmas time. I know I say it all the time, but you are. Yeah. Marlene Naj is nogging it up. Oh my god, you get <laughs> nogged. Please stop. <laughs> Ian Murphy's not even there. Like, what? No, Ian Murphy is... Um, <laughs> we always go to Murky. <laughs> Ian is eaten. A ton of Yule log cake this holiday season. <laughs> Rebecca O'Donnell is uh, She's thinking, oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Slack. <laughs> How many people are going to make that fucking joke? Please, I'm How leaving the internet. Um, Kendall Berg. Berg is saying burr because it's chilly and it smells like snow. <laughs> Allie McGregor is. Always going to look forward to a nice ro- Ferrer Rocher. <laughs> ro- ro- ro. Megan Grilly is going to do some grilled ham instead of a baked ham to really shake things up. What about the grilled ahi? Oh, the, yeah, the grilled Christmas a- ahi. Chloe Ireland well, is. But before we get started, Chloe Ireland it was formerly Chloe Killip, but she has informed us that they just recently got married. Whoa! So, congratulations! Sleigh bells and wedding bells! <laughs> <laughs> But, like, okay, cool. That's that's really changing it up for us. More of you guys should start doing that. Just change your um, names. <laughs> especially, like, the people with just one word as their name, you know? We're looking at you, Jackson Ilka. <laughs> and Sarah. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, Chloe Ireland is closing the door to their closet stuffed to the brim with Christmas decor. <laughs> Taco Roach 
is uh, roasting chestnuts on an open fire. You're damn right. Cassandra Buckout is out on the rooftop. Clip, clip, clip. <laughs> what is <laughs> click, click, click? Come on. <laughs> clip, click, click. I'm sure someone's done that before. <laughs> Um, we got Haley Cadwalder, who is hanging up a nice Christmas banner on their wall. A.K.A. what we're going to do. Yep. Camellia Malky is uh, at the mall getting all their shopping done for everybody in one day. Maddie Pullman is wrapping a pole with tinsel. Amanda Marie is amazed that nobody else in their neighborhood has put up any lights yet. Allison Frankoy is frankly not fond of the Santa at the mall. <laughs> Caitlin Whalen is wailing because their candy cane little spear that they made broke. Yeah, that's the worst. That's the worst. Cody Robinson is coating a gingerbread house in frosting. Lauren Chavone is on the phone with Santa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Crazy the kind of connections you have, Lauren. <laughs> Dana Daly is Do Santa we... Daly checking out his naughty and nice list. Oh, cool. I mean, yeah. Megan Wilson is willing to bet that they won't get any cookies this year. Aww. That's a negative way to look at it. Listen. <laughs> Claire Wood is uh, loving having a roaring fireplace with... Wood. Wood it every day because it's cold. <laughs> that was fucking something. With wood? With wood. What's that guy's noise? Oh my god, what? <laughs> I hate it. Kelly Adams is adding some marshmallows to a cup of hot peppermint cocoa. <laughs> That's Lila. She uses a couple of marshmallows. <laughs> That's true. Anna Hernandez is desperate to find a stocking with their initials on it. Me last year. Jenna Gordonier is gorgeously decorating a gingerbread house so well that they got on the kitchen. Oh my god. Which goals. honestly, my goal. <laughs> Sarah is scared of their electric bill after this holiday season. No, me. <laughs> Flynn and Drew... Drew Drew inspiration from Stars Hollow for their Christmas decorations. Amazing. Bridget Dubin is dubbing this holiday season the greatest one yet. <laughs> Hillary Gay is sledding down a hill of snow. <laughs> Always on the hills. <laughs> Mackenzie Knight is waiting for Santa to drive around on a little like you know. A uh, fire truck or something like that? Yeah. That's how he came around in my neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. He did it on mine, too. It's crazy how he could do that. Wow, In every Santa. state or whatever. Wow, Santa. How do you do that? Santa's fucking busy. <laughs> and we got Rachel Evans, who is eventually going to put on their tree. Put up their tree. Put on their tree. <laughs> Wear that tree <laughs> loud and proud, Rachel. All right, what are the other Beach Bunches doing this December? I would say they're all decorating gingerbread cookies, you know, because that's always, like, the most fun. Yes. We got uh, Rebecca Edmondson. We got Ashley Reifenberger. Mallory. Stephanie Oliver. Allie Malone. Kathleen Wynn. Rose Barnett. So thanks, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode of coffee with Rachel. That's the show that we host. Yes, yeah. it is. You almost forgot. <laughs> I'm Rachel. I'm Chris. We already did this. We'll see you next time. <laughs> that was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>